Ukrainian forces have repeatedly asked the U.S. for these. They're the Army Tactical Missile System, ATACMS for short. These missiles can come equipped with a 500-pound class fragmentation warhead and have a maximum range of about 190 miles, which could allow Ukrainian forces to reach further into Russian-held territories inside Ukraine, including Crimea. In September, U.S. officials said they would send a small number of ATACMS missiles to Ukraine in coming weeks, after debating the risk of escalating tensions with Russia and worrying about its small domestic stockpile. We've been supplying Ukraine with items from our junk drawer, as opposed to the high-end missile capabilities. Here's how these missiles could speed up Ukraine's counteroffensive against Russia, and why the U.S. was initially hesitant to send them. ATACMS is the Army Field Artillery's premier surface-to-surface -surface strike system. It allows them to be mobile, to disperse, to hide in terrain and clutter, uh, and to be able to impose certain kinds of uncertainty upon the enemy about where they'll be coming from. The ATACMS is designed to be launched from a ground vehicle, like the U.S. HIMARS, which is already in Ukraine. Once the missile is fired, the ground vehicle can shoot and scoot to avoid retaliatory attacks. This could be a huge advantage for Ukrainian forces, which have been using a similar missile, the UK's Storm Shadow, that's fired from an airborne jet. It just offers one more level of flexibility for the counteroffensive. The other systems that require launching by air limit where and when the Ukrainians can use them. They need that air platform. This essentially empowers uh, ground forces to take these launchers anywhere they need them. One of the interesting features of the HIMARS launcher is that it doesn't reveal uh, exactly what, what missile it's carrying. That's uh, advantageous because assuming an enemy is surveilling you won't necessarily know what's inside and won't know whether it is a higher value ATACMS uh, as opposed to the shorter range stuff. This gives Ukrainians the added advantage of firing missiles from multiple types of domains, including air and ground. But the HIMARS mobility means that Ukrainians could get closer to Russian territory, further increasing the missile's reach. ATACM's missiles can reach up to 190 miles, considerably farther than the Storm Shadow's top range of 155 miles. There's just all kinds of operational advantages to that greater range. That reach allows, for instance, uh, Ukrainian forces to be able to fire from safer territory, to not have to walk right up to the Russian lines to be able to hit something deeper back. This additional range could force Moscow to move storage facilities and command centers more than 200 miles from the front, and that could complicate efforts to supply troops with food and ammunition, aiding Ukrainians in their counteroffensive. Plus, this weapon could be useful for getting Ukrainian targeting inside some of these Russian-held territories, specifically Crimea. ATACMS can also move significantly faster than other missiles, reaching a top speed of Mach 3, or around 2,300 miles per hour. In contrast, cruise missiles like the Storm Shadow or Russia's KH-101, for example, have top speeds of only around 600 to 700 miles per hour. The speed of the ATACMS is simply a function of the fact that it's a ballistic missile with a big rocket engine, single stage on the back. So this speed is useful for time-critical targets, things that may move, that need to be hit uh, very promptly. The ATACMS guidance system combines inertial navigation with GPS. This creates highly accurate targeting, preventing electronic jamming and interference, and minimizing collateral damage on impact. ATACMS are also designed with features adept at hitting multiple types of targets. These missiles are highly maneuverable in the air, allowing them to hit targets from a variety of angles. A simple ballistic missile is going to travel on a ballistic trajectory. It's going to just follow gra uh, gravity's rainbow, uh, something that's very predictable uh, and curved. The benefit of maneuverability is that you can interrupt that rainbow. You can come down in a different way. You can maneuver to be more uh, on target. You can go after perhaps a moving target and correct for, for errors. And yes, you can come down uh, vertically uh, if you'd like. So that vertical impact may be useful to come right over top of target and just make it that much harder for it to see it coming or to hit the vulnerable spot on an armored vehicle. ATACMS missiles can contain one of two types of warheads, unitary or submunition. A unitary warhead is just what it sounds like. It is one big explosive. It's in one piece. Submunitions uh, or bomblets uh, are likewise what they sound like. Uh, lots of little things that spread out. There's advantages to both depending on what you're targeting. 
Inside an Attackum submunition warhead are hundreds of steel-cased balls filled with incendiary pellets. Which could be likened crudely to a shotgun blast where it has a large spray of explosive impact on the target. And then there's a unitary warhead which would be crudely likened to a single bullet out of a pistol. Unitary warheads are better at targeting specific single targets, while submunition warheads are highly effective against moving personnel and equipment. The unitary and the submunitions are admittedly tailored for different things, but both of them uh, can go after lots of different targets. So what we don't know is what variant they would provide or what combination of variants they would provide to uh, the Ukrainians. Despite Ukraine's requests, the U.S. was hesitant to send TACOMs until now. There was concerns about uh, escalating the conflict with the Russians. There's concerns that the Ukrainians could use these attackums that have this long range and target uh, inside Russian territory. But we're also at a point in the counteroffensive, which is it's gone a lot slower than anybody expected. And so uh, the U.S. may be digging deeper into its pockets and greenlighting other weapons systems that it didn't want to provide before, given kind of the time constraints. The Biden administration faced increased pressure from Ukraine and Congress to send Attackums missiles. Last June, Congress signed a bipartisan resolution in favor of sending Attackums to Ukraine. And the administration has reversed course on weapons before, like with the Abrams tank. But officials have also expressed concern about the U.S.'s domestic Attackums stockpile. The U.S. is really trying to balance, you know, its own national security needs with those of Ukraine and Europe at large. And the United States just doesn't have a whole lot of these lying around. They've been out of production to some extent uh, for some time. This recent reversal comes shortly after a U.S. Army official said that the replacement missile for the Attackums, the PRISM, will be out of production and entering U.S. stockpiles in the near future. The PRISM, or Precision Strike Missile, can reach over 300 miles, which is significantly farther than the Attackums. That may also mitigate some of the impact on the U.S. inventory to provide the attackums, thus kind of opening the door for potentially providing them now.